Okay, one thing I want to change is the order in which the user can enter the text boxes and the buttons. When the user presses tab on the keyboard, the focus will move to the next element on the form. So I'm going to click the text box over here and I will change the tab index property. So this one is five. I'm just gonna leave it as long as this one is six, which it is. I'll click the next one, it should be seven. This one is eight, this one is nine. So that's correct. Now the next will be the button. So when the user presses button, I mean the tab, the excerpt button should be highlighted, which it would be because tab index is 10, which is the next one in line. The next one's in 11 for the clear button. We don't want to tab for the timer text box because that will just display the time and we don't want to change that. Instead, we want to go to start button and that should be right after the clear. So if clear is 11, then start button should have the tab index of 12. And pause should be 13. And finally, exit should be 14. So this way, when I run it, and I'm running it by pressing Ctrl F5, I'm not going through the debug mode, but you can see that the name text box has the focus, has the cursor, and when I press tab, I go to address, then city, state, zip, then accept, clear. I still go to the timer, but the timer I will make disabled because we don't wanna be able to edit it. So that will be skipped actually. So next is start, pause, and exit. So this one works correctly. So like I said, we'll disable the timer. And to disable it, we will simply change the property of read only to true. So over here you have read only, by default it's false, but we don't want to edit it, so we'll set it to true. So you can see that it's now being kind of grayed out. But it will still allow us to display the time. Uh, it won't just allow us to edit it manually. So I'm going to click the text box. And by default, I want to display the time in form of hours, minutes, and seconds. Right now it's just blank, so I will e enter a text which is going to be the default text when the form loads. So right now the text is blank and I want to display it as 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0 at the start of the form. And we can also format it a little, like for example I want a bigger font for this. So I'll click the font and select some bolder font, let's say 10. I'll click OK, so you can see it's bolder now. And we can, of course, format it to move it to center. And to center it, we'll just go to text align property. By default, it's, of course, left. And we'll click center. And last thing I want to do is create shortcuts. Sometimes on the keyboard, when you press Alt and a letter or a key, you will automatically get focus on certain element on the form. And I want to do it for all the buttons. So, for example, when the user presses Alt A, I wanna, I want it to act as an Enter for Accept button. If the user presses Alt C, it would be the Clear button that would be pressed. To do that, we'll simply go to the Accept button or select it, and then on the text in front of the letter that you wanna act as a shortcut, you'll press an ampersand. So. I will put end in front of the A. So that will create the A with the combination of Alt and A as the shortcut. And you can see that the A is now underlined in the button. And the same with the clear. I want the Alt C to act as a shortcut, so I will put the ampersand in front of the C. The start, the same thing ampersand in front of S. This one will be in front of P, so it's gonna be Alt P to pause the timer. And exit, instead of E, Alt E, let's make it Alt X. So I'll put the ampersand in front of X. So now you see that the X is underscored or underlined. So that way, when the user presses Alt X, 
the exit button will actually be entered. All right, so uh, this is the form. We have the tab index correctly. Uh, we have the timer, we have it a little bit of uh, formatted and we have the shortcuts as well. So in the next video, we are ready to code.